Howdy going? How's howdy howdy going? Is that a is that a phrase? Howdy going? How's it going? Anyhow, thanks for watching. My name is Mark, and I'm making this video because sometimes what I'll do is I like to get a video made about um, a subject that I can't necessarily find a straight answer on. So I'll try to make a video on it and just try to use what I've researched about it. And of course, the topic of this video is how much does it cost to build a professional recording studio? Now, with that being said, I am not going to be an expert at the cost because I've never built a professional recording studio, especially in a building. Um, well, I'm not going to say in a building either. Uh, a lot of people would consider my home a professional recording studio because maybe because of, maybe because of how it's set up, um, the gear I'm using, or whatever the case may be. I think what defines a professional is uh, more than just gear and equipment. I think it's more about experience level. Uh, a professional is someone who just got years of experience and became really good at it. That, to me, defines a professional. Because um, there are a lot of people that could be a professional at any occupation and they just don't have the equipment because they can't afford equipment. Does not make them a professional because if they got their hands on that equipment, they'll know exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, exactly how they're going to do it, why, you know, the, you know, the who, what, when, where, and why, and how. They can fulfill, they can feel all that. Um, and it's just sometimes people just don't have access because of circumstances. But to be a professional is basically the person that has knowledge of years of knowledge and experience and they, they got their hands on the equipment they definitely will be able to, to make it work better than someone who can have that equipment and has no idea what they're doing. So with that being said, thanks for watching. My name is Mark. I don't want to be very, very long on this topic, but I'm going to give you my guesses on a professional studio. Now, here's the thing that I've always noticed about pro professional commercial studios. Some studios will have... Other than your typical, you know, entranceway, what I like to recall where the receptionist area is, and maybe there's a few, uh, you know, office areas where the studio manager is, maybe the studio owner, the studio manager, the, the you know, the secretary. Um, there might be lounge areas for artists to be able to, you know, um, relax in there's usually a kitchen area but most of these types of studios are secured enclosed they're off the public can't get in those particular studios because they don't because they know that you got high-end celebrity clients coming in, in them and they the first thing they want to value is their um their security it's kind of like even if i let's say by chance i happen to get a high-end client in my studio and they needed to really be guarded from paparazzis in the public if the public became aware that they were coming here one great thing about that is you can always park in the garage unless it's like one of those big old jacket long extended SUVs or you know one of those limos or something like that which is going to be obvious if you have a like a limo pulling up in my a typical neighborhood, people are gonna look at that. They like because that's out of out of the ordinary. But if you're in a regular you know, regular car, you know, it can pull into my garage. I can always shut the garage. And you know, of course you walk in the house and no one would ever know. And of course when we leave, you get in the car, you open the garage door, you drive out, shut the garage door, of course the car would be tinted, you wouldn't see who's in it. And that would keep them secure and to be discreet. Now, let's go back to the cost. I always looked at it, it's always based on if the, one of the main factors is if the recording studio owns the building. 
You know, some people own their own buildings like Capitol Records. They own their own buildings so they can own their own studio. But here's one of the reasons why you start seeing a lot of recording studios have started to close. is because they can't afford to pay the rent. As much, as much money they spent to renovate the place to turn it into a commercial professional studio. But when these studios are client dependent, then it's all based on money coming in. So now we're talking, other than, like I said, other than having your typical reception area, your studio owner, person that owns the studio, the studio manager, the studio managers makes, they're the one managing uh, how the studios are run between, you know, depending on how many uh, studios you have in there. Um, they're managing what clients are coming back and forth. Uh, then you got your you got your maintenance staff. Your maintenance staff is exactly what they are. They manage the they manage the the equipment and the gear, and you might have a building manager that manages the the building itself, or they coordinate with the actual you know if they're renting the space. Um, but some studios have to go, have went out of business because they weren't getting the clients, so they can't pay the rent, uh, and the, the you know the electricity bills, and they couldn't pay the the staff and everyone else, so they had to start cutting the staff and everyone else, and they had to they had to close. And a lot of the gear that they acquired, um, a lot of that stuff came from loans. You know, they got whether they were credit card loans or you know, you just take out loans. You know, and some of these loans are, you know, very big investment loans. It depends on the banking and all that. So to make it. To, to wrap the video up to not very 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 long on this the you got to look at how the envision of the recording studio itself and how many studios are, are going to be in there some studios are just one one control room with just one console with just one set of racks of gear and one live room and it might have Several rooms, a you know, vocal booth, you know, maybe a drum booth, a main live room booth, and then you got the control room with it might have the lounge with the kitchen, the bathroom, the rest areas and things like that, the studio manager and all that. And so what the problem with a studio like that was not really a problem. The limitations to a studio like that is you can only book clients in your studio one type of client or depending on the client if it's whether it's a single artist a group or a band you can only rent that time out to them at one given time then you have to prepare for prep the studio for you look at your your schedule to see if you can um you have to see who the next clients coming in and then sometimes these clients some clients don't mind being there for a few hours and then coming back the next day for a few hours and then come back for the next few hours. Some clients are very, very, um, I don't like to say anal or nothing like that. I would say more of like, you got your, you know, when he was alive, like Prince. Their, Prince was a very demanding person when it came to studio and recording. That's why he ended up building his own in Paisley Park, you know, because he knew... How he was about Prince lived at lived with a bed at Sunset Sound and he lived there. You know, like nine months out of the year, he was in the studio the entire rainy one. You know, one section was closed off for just Prince alone. And some studios can afford if you you know Prince is you know if he's got a million dollar budget, they don't care how long you live there all you want with a million dollar budget. But some clients don't have budgets like that. Some clients hundred thousand dollar budget. Fifty thousand dollar budget, or whatever. So that it's all based on the money. So the last part of the video would be it. It's really going to depend on how many control rooms and live rooms and all that that you envision. And the thing is, if you are a new studio, just because you build a new studio, I mean you're not doesn't mean you're going to start drawing in clients because you got no reputation. Um. So the only ones that are really going to take a chance on you when you're new. You know, a lot of times they will take a chance if you plan on building a commercial studio where you want to work with big name clients. The only way is some of these studios will take a chance on you if you already have um, 
let's say some of the local artists blow up. And then they're going to find out where they record. And man, they're going to listen to the recordings. Like, man, that sounds so good. Where'd you record? Who'd you record with? And, well, I recorded at such and such studio here. That's going to draw more clients. Then you're going to start being, then your studio manager is going to start to get busy. So really, that's really what it boils down to. The need. So you have to envision whether you, is your studio only going to need Excuse me, are you going to need one control room with one live room or are you going to need multiple because you might start getting overbooked? And if you don't have enough control rooms and live rooms, you can't run multiple, session, multiple sessions at the same time. And then sometimes you have to isolate each control room and live room from each other so they're not bleeding into each other. So sound isolation and sound restriction and, and all this stuff have to be considered so what am I saying at the end of the video is all based on the cost of materials that's going to cost to do that. We're talking the cost of wiring, the cost of materials, and the cost of gear, and the cost of staff. I example, you got recording studios like United that have multiple live rooms and multiple control rooms. You know, Blackbird, you got Larrabee. Um, Sunset Sound and um, Sound City, um, uh, the record plant, Electric Lady, and all these commercial studios that have multiple live room and control rooms. So now that breaks down to when you when those studios not only we're talking about hundreds thousands of dollars in just wiring the place up thousands of dollars in building the rooms, you know, the getting the glass, uh, building all the materials for the acoustic. You're talking thousands of dollars in that. Then we're talking about thousand dollars in gear. And this is the reason why these studios have to have a multiple, multiple of different types of gear. This is why they still choose to go with large consoles and still rack of gear, even though everyone is using High end A D to D A A D to D A converters such as Apogee, maybe the Avid HD 192, uh, maybe the Antelope. It could be, you know, the Lynx Aurora. You know, we're talking these high end. We're not talking the home studio audio interface. We're not talking like a little two channel focus right or two channel M audio or two channel. No, we're not talking about it. We need something that's going to be able to record big sessions because not only are these studios booking high-end clients that have, you know, we're talking bands that tour every year that draw in hundreds of thousands of dollars just touring. So they make thousands of dollars just touring. And we're talking like U2, the Rolling Stones, um, ACDC, you know, bands that... Uh, uh, Def Leppard. We're talking about bands that tour almost, they've been touring for 30, 40 years, and they still draw millions of dollars touring every year. And then we're talking about high end clients like Mariah Carey or Justin Timberlake or, you know, your Adele. We're talking clients that they tour and they make a lot of money just touring, so they, they have the money to book high end studios. That's why some of these studios are still in business. Um, but some of these studios have multiple sessions going on. You have one client booked in book A or studio A, another client in studio B, and maybe a local client in studio C, uh, maybe the studio D. So now you build, uh, now you have multiple recording sessions. Like for example, not to be funny, but I actually, my house, even though I don't have it sound isolated, I can run a session in this room and then I can also run a different session in my little smaller setup downstairs, and I can run have two sessions going at the same time, almost. Um, it just depends on what we're doing, but I can run two different clients if I wanted to, technically. So, what what does that mean? So that means that, you know, if you look at it, most studios because they're going to be using. Uh, a lot of different high-end clients, they have to use the best high-quality gear possible. 
This is why I made a video about clones and lower price gear versus um, the name brand stuff. I look at it like this. Naturally, as a recording studio, if I was book, if I would, if if I would turn around and I knew that I was going to be booking um, a high end rock band, and then I turn around, I'm going to have you know, let's say Stevie Wonder comes in, uh, and I got all these different types of high end clients that I know can afford to pay hundred thousand dollars, you know, whatever the money, whatever it's going to cost to book the studio for so many weeks. I can't afford to have nothing but the name brand stuff. I, of course, you know, I was picking, you know, I got Clark Technic and Art and and all that. But, I, you know, like my most expensive preamp would be my Avalon. I would have to have gear like the Avalon. It's just because, if, it's because you cannot afford to have the cheaper or the clone gear breaking when they're paying that kind of money. That's why uh, the name brand stuff usually have a reputation of holding up the best. Uh, and that's a no-brainer, uh, but I said that for people like most of us that watch my video, none of most, almost none of us have high-end clients like that. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this for the end, because this is a, a, a for one client that watches my video that I'm working with. They watch my videos. Uh, all I can say is I got, I'm dealing with one client that it will probably turn into me actually having to own an SSL console with with need preamps and and more API EQs and 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 universal audio 1176s and to, it will get to that point I think it's going to be like that with the potential of what we're working on so um that with that being said that will be nice to have that because in the end for a home, for any studio owner, yes, we all want the best name brand stuff. But the thing is, most of us cannot afford it. Uh, and some people like me might say, "Well, I can't afford it yet." Wink, wink. <laughs> but anyhow, so to end the video, you just have to look at the cost of what is the vision of building a studio. Whether you're going to have some people can only afford to build one live room and one control room. And yet, whether it's they're converting their house or they're going to convert a separate, you know, maybe a detached, a garage, a, you know, they might have to rent, go find a place to rent um, and then convert it. It just all depends. But put it like this, you best believe that um, to build a studio, you're looking at thousands of dollars. But the thing is, if it's if it may cost you that much, that I mean, you're talking a hundred thousand dollars, you know, uh, I don't know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars just in high quality wiring, if not twenty thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars in wiring to wire the place properly. You know, you're talking two or three thousand dollars patch bays. Uh, you know, fifty thousand dollar console to a hundred thousand dollar console. You know, some of the best quality, and even your computer. You're gonna want the best high quality computer, and AD to DA converters. You don't want a chance of buying two hundred dollars here, three hundred dollars there, three hundred dollars there, three hundred dollars there, um, and having that stuff break if you're gonna be dealing with high end clients. Now, I'm not saying that. You know, here's what I'm saying. Also, not in the video. I'm not saying that you can't buy maybe an ART Pro VLA compressor and it works flawlessly even if you're recording high-end clients through that piece of gear. It may work awesome. Um, but everyone knows that majority of the most expensive high-quality gear, the best, the best name brand stuff in the business, has a reputation for being why it's the best stuff in the business. Certain microphones, uh, you know, whether it's Newman, Telefunken, uh, certain Marshalls, maybe certain Rhodes, uh, certain microphones have, you know, things like that, certain pieces of gear. Uh, whether it's, you know, Fender, it could be Marshall, it could be, you know, 
whatever the, the you know pieces of gear, drum sets. People know everyone knows some of the best sounding drum sets. UDW, uh, Zildjian and pasty cymbals. Uh, you know Vic Firth sticks. Um, you know some high quality humbucker. You know uh, pickups and a Les Paul or whatever. Uh, some of the best synthesizers. Like for example. All my synthesizers are pro level synthesizers. You know, my every synthesizer I have in my house are pro level. I don't have cheap. I don't have like a two hundred dollar Casio. Not picking on Casio, but I don't have a two hundred dollar Casio. I have a you know, um, you know, we're talking high end pro level boards. You have to. Um, so I'm going to wrap the video up. So I know I don't know if people are looking for specific numbers, but you can't give specific numbers unless you have. What is the vision if you were going to build a commercial studio? What is the vision that, you know, that are you going to want to build a studio because you're going to want to deal with multiple clients or you're going to want to deal with high-end clients one at a time? Um, and then after that, you have to look at the cost of hiring staff. Uh, you're going to want interns in there, assistant engineers. You're going to want to get some of the best engineers in the business if you can. Um, you're going to want to get some, you know, assistant engineers. You're going to want a good studio manager. If you're the studio owner, you're going to want a good studio manager that can manage clients and, and manage the staff and all that. The studio manager manages all that. You're going to want, you know, um, a good maintenance crew that know how to fix the gear in case it breaks. They don't, time is money when it comes to clients. They don't have the time to be waiting because a channel went out, you know, like if you have a channel. You know, like an SSL channel, they just pull that channel out. They got a spear. Plug it right back in. Session might be down for five minutes. And sometimes the board is able to, you keep the board on. You don't even have to turn the board off. You just turn that section off. Click, turn that section off. Pull that car because that one channel failed. Slide a new one in. Turn it back on. And, you know, you might, hopefully you can try to zero it out. But you might, bam, get it going. And the session, okay, we're ready to go again. That's how it can be. Like, for example, a console like this, Ali, you can't do that. If something happened in this console, the board is down. You have to open the board up and find out, you know, which channel, whatever. Hopefully, the good thing is that with me, I got some channels that I'm not using. I'll just switch from a channel that went dead. I'll just pull the cables out of that, swap it to another channel. It might be inconvenient because I might have something on this section. Now I got to work over here on this section, but at least I can keep the session going. Um... So, and same thing with your DEW. People think that, well, why don't you just work in a box? You got to remember, hard drives crash. Computers fail. They do. If you don't think your computer fail, you almost say, I already got enough computers and hard drives. I, let me tell you, my power supply went out of that computer. The power supply and the hard drive went out in that computer. I got... I got these hard drives and uh, that failed. That got stuff on. I can't retrieve now because the hard drive failed. It's locked. Uh, so even your hardware, or and I've even seen where files get corrupted. You know where you're you're dealing with stuff and the file get corrupted, and next you know you're working on a session in a computer because you could be working on a session in your box with the plugins. You got everything going, and all of a sudden the computer just it overheated, crashed, locked up. And now the session's done because once you try to recover it, if you're able to, to you know, just did a hard or the power went out and you didn't get a chance to save the session because all of a sudden there's a power outage and all of a sudden the computer went out, you know, whatever the case may be. Some people are like, well, you know, you should have a backup or, you know, if the computer, but some computers are still not, not, not like laptops, they're on batteries. Some computers just run off the power supply only. And all of a sudden, the computer power goes. The power goes out. Now the session's done. And when you, the power comes back on, you get it back up. That all that time is wasted because you never got a chance to save, or whatever the case. It's a many factors. So, so don't think that you're you're safe because you're working in the box. Nothing's safe, whether you're working out of the box and using a console with racks of gear, or you're working in the box. Stuff gets corrupted. Computers fail, Macs or PCs, they both fail because it's electronics. Um, so that's going to do it for this video. All I was going to say is this, that you have to look at the cost of how many control rooms, live rooms, and what it's going to cost. And you have to make a list of what it's going to take to run wire, how you're going to wire it up, you know, build the walls and everything else. And that's really 
the magic of, or that's really basically the level of what it would cost you. And put it like this, if you're going to build a commercial studio dealing with clients and you're going to have the best because you're going to be dealing with high-end clients, this is the reason why they're million-dollar studios. Very reason why they're, because the cost of running them and building them can get it very, very expensive very, very, very fast. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, and y'all have a great one. We'll see you in the next one.